the dividend discount model. In competitive financial markets, the price of a financial asset will be equal to the present value of its expected cash flow stream discounted at its opportunity cost of capital. In this topic, we'll use the basic discounted cash flow valuation model to develop a model of common stock valuation called the dividend discount model. In discounted cash flow valuation, we would discount the stock's cash flows. The cash flow stream for a common stock consists of cash dividends and the terminal price of the stock that the investor receives when the stock is sold at the end of the investor's investment period. Let's let P0 equal the initial price. D1, the year one dividend. P1, the terminal price at the end of year one. Given the stock's cash flows, we input them into the discounted cash flow model. The current price of a common stock is a dividend received in year one plus a terminal price at the end of year one, discounted back to the present at the stock's opportunity cost of capital. A stock's opportunity cost of capital is also called the cost of equity. Let's rearrange the equation to separate the present value of the dividend and the present value of the terminal price. So the current price is equal to the present value of the year one dividend plus the present value of the terminal price at the end of year one. Now let's expand the equation by asking what determines P1, the stock price at year one. the buyer of the stock at year one will look over his investment period at the dividend he'll receive in year two and the terminal price he'll receive at the end of year two. The buyer will pay no more for the stock than the present value at year one of this dividend and this terminal price. So the price at year one is equal to the year two dividend plus a year two terminal price, discounted back one year to year one. Let's substitute this definition of P1 for the year one terminal price in our model. The price at year one is discounted back one year to the present. And we get this expression. Let's rearrange the equation to separate the present value of the dividend and the present value of the terminal price. We've expanded the model by one year. Let's expand the model another year by asking what determines P2, the price at the end of year two. The buyer of the stock at year two would be looking at the dividend received in year three and its terminal price at the end of year three. The price at year two is equal to the year three dividend plus a year three terminal price discounted back one year to year two. Let's substitute this definition of P2 for the year two terminal price in our model. The price of the stock at time two is discounted back two years to the present. And we get this expression. Let's rearrange the equation to separate the present value of the dividend from the present value of the terminal price. And you see what's happening to the model. We have the present value of a series of dividends and the terminal price is being pushed further in the future we can generalize. The price of a common stock has two component parts. The present value of a series of dividends and the present value of the terminal price at the end of the investment horizon. Our generalized equation. This equation says that the value of common stock 
is equal to the discounted value of its expected dividends and the present value of a terminal future price. But we don't stop here. How far out should we look? How far out do we push the terminal price? In principle, the number of investment periods could be infinite. Common stocks don't die of old age, as their corporations as legal entities have an unlimited life. Let's push the terminal price to the limit and have n, the investment horizon, go to infinity. As n approaches infinity, the present value of the terminal price gets smaller and smaller and approaches zero. Let's have the present value of the terminal price go to zero. So the price of a share of common stock can be conceived as the present value of a perpetual stream of dividends. And this is the dividend discount model. The model says that the value of common stock is equal to the present value of all future dividends. Now before we go to the application of this model in pricing stock, let's answer some questions about this model. The return investors expect on their investment consists of dividends and capital gains, an increase in the price of their shares. The dividend discount model discounts a stream of dividends. So does the dividend discount model ignore capital gains? Some say that the dividend discount model is implausible because it ignores capital gains. But that's not true. The model assumes that the return on investment in any period is determined by the cash dividend and the capital gain. And let's show that. We developed a dividend discount model starting with the cash flows in the initial period where the price of the common stock was equal to the present value of the period's dividend and terminal price. We're going to solve for the period's rate of return. So multiply both sides of the equation by 1 plus r. Multiply p0 through. p0 times 1 is p0. p0 times r is r times p0. Now subtract p0 from both sides. The rate of return times the initial investment is a dollar return on the period's investment. The dollar return for the period consists of the dividend paid in the period and the capital gain, the change in the price of the stock over the period. Now let's divide both sides by the initial price and we get the rate of return for the period. So the dividend discount model does not ignore capital gains. The dividend discount model assumes that the return on investment in any period is determined by the cash dividend and the capital gain in the period. Why discount dividends and not earnings per share? Earnings are residual cash flows claimed by shareholders. So why aren't earnings per share discounted rather than dividends? Dividends are only a portion of earnings. Let's consider the cash inflows and cash outflows associated with earnings per share from the shareholders point of view. portion of the earnings can be paid out as cash dividends to shareholders. Another portion can be retained in the firm and reinvested in new plant, equipment, and working capital. Retained earnings are additional investments in the firm by the firm's shareholders. Investment is a cash outflow from an investor's point of view. So retained earnings are cash outflows from the shareholder's point of view. Dividends are paid out to shareholders and these dividends are the cash receipts from the investment in common stock. 
So dividends are cash inflows from the shareholder's point of view. The price of common stock is not the present value of a stream of earnings per share, because earnings per share is both a cash inflow and a cash outflow from the shareholder's point of view. The relevant cash flows to value an investment are the actual cash inflows received from the investment. For common stock, these are the cash dividends paid to shareholders. So the price of common stock is the present value of a stream of dividends. Now, of course, shareholders expect a positive return on their additional investment in the firm by way of retained earnings. They expect their reinvested earnings to increase future earnings and future dividends. What if a firm is not currently paying dividends? Is a dividend discount model applicable for a firm that is not paying dividends? Well, let's note that unpaid dividends in the period increase the terminal price by the unpaid dividend. Suppose you have a dollar in change in your pocket. Let's imagine that's the equity cash flow of the corporation. Take 10 cents out of your pocket and place it in your hand as a dividend. You now have 90 cents in your pocket and 10 cents in your hand, the terminal price and the dividend. If you didn't take that 10 cents out of your pocket, there would still be a dollar in your pocket. So an unpaid dividend in the period increases that period's terminal price by the unpaid dividend. But it doesn't stop there. The price of common stock is the present value of all future dividends. But the dividend discount model is not saying that dividends are paid every period. As discussed previously, Earnings can be paid as dividends and can also be retained in the firm and invested for shareholders in positive net present value opportunities. Future dividends will be higher as a result of the returns on these investments. So a low or zero dividend payout today can translate into higher expected dividends in the future. Young growing firms may pay no dividends because they're financing their growth with retained earnings. But when firms move beyond their growth phase in their life cycles, they generate more cash flow than needed to finance all positive net present value opportunities. At this point in time, there'll be pressure on the firm to begin paying dividends. So it's assumed that at some point in its life cycle, a firm begins paying regular dividends. Therefore, the dividend discount model is conceptually applicable to firms not currently paying dividends.